the Xbox controller is the best controller you can get. It's an all around comfortable controller, but that's a little bit subjective. Not everybody likes the offset thumbsticks, but what really can't be debated is that it's an incredibly versatile controller. It works with basically everything. Obviously, it's not gonna work with the Nintendo Switch, but it works seamlessly with a PC, and it also works with Mac OS and iOS and Android. Basically, any game that has controller support across any of those platforms will support an Xbox controller. This includes emulators, too. So technically, the Xbox controller has the most support across any platform, more than any other controller and the best version of an Xbox controller is the Elite controller. And I've known this for years, and I make a lot of controller videos here on YouTube. Some people think of me as the controller guy. Don't tell those people, but I've never owned an Elite controller before. They're just expensive. But after like seven years, I finally have a good reason to get myself an Elite controller because there's a new one in town, the Series 2 Core. It's the same Elite controller we've had for a while, but white, and it doesn't come with all the extra accessories, some of which are a bit overkill, but some are kind of what makes an Elite controller an Elite controller. But getting rid of some of those accessories makes it a little cheaper. This is great because it finally makes those premium Elite controllers a little more affordable. But that's only part of what this video is about because along with the announcement of the core Elite controller came the inclusion of Elite controllers in Xbox Design Lab. This means you can finally customize your brand new premium controller. And you have a ton of options. You don't have to shell out all the money for a full Elite kit. You can get yourself a unique, one-of-a-kind Xbox controller and still pay less than other people who are just walking into Best Buy and paying $180 for a stock retail Elite controller. This is by far the best way you can get what's probably the best controller you can get. This video is sponsored by Audible. Hey Bob, did you get that edit done yet? What? Oh my God. Did you get the edit done? Yeah, yeah, it's right here. Take a listen. <laughs> ah! That sounded horrible. Oh yeah, I was not paying attention. Have you ever heard of Audible? They have an incredible selection of audiobooks from across every genre. From bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, mysteries and thrillers, motivation, wellness, business, and more. Yeah, so I've been listening to Reggie's new book, Disrupting the Game. It's narrated by him. Isn't that awesome? They also have podcasts. They have both your podcasts on there. Okay, I actually didn't know that. That's actually pretty cool. So about that. Just let Audible discover new ways to laugh, be inspired, or be entertained. New members can try Audible for free for 30 days. Just go to audible.com slash wolfden, spelt like that, or text wolfden to 500. 500. Hey! Stop listening to Audible! No, I love Audible. It's awesome. I just discovered this new awesome book. You ever heard of uh, Harry Potter? Nah, I was more of a Holmes kid. I ended up getting the works on mine because I felt like if I was going to get one, I might as well go all of the way. Also, if you're going to get any of the add-ons or accessories at all, it's actually not a bad deal to just get the whole package. If you just wanted the core controller, you could just pick your D-pad design and you're pretty much done with it. But you'd be missing out on those back paddles, which are part of what I think makes an Elite controller an Elite controller. The extra accessories also include additional thumbsticks, which I don't find particularly useful. I mostly just stick to the original ones anyway. It also removes the need for those thumbstick grips or risers or whatever you call them and the case, which holds everything together, which also comes with a long braided cable and a little charge dock that lives inside the case. The case has a hole in the back so you can charge the controller while it's in the case. This is, I think, the best accessory you can get to protect your hefty investment. I don't really need the faceted D-pad, although that's a nice touch, and I don't really care about the thumbsticks. 
although that's a nice touch. If it were significantly cheaper, I would just get myself the back paddles and the case, but it's actually $4 cheaper to just get the whole package. The whole fun thing here is planning out your design on their Design Lab website for the Elite controller. It's very similar to the way that it was with the original controller, which I made a video on about a year ago now. That has changed a little bit, but not too much. And my biggest critique of that whole system was that there was no option for an Elite controller. Obviously, you get to choose the color of the face, which is a little limited. I'm sure they will add more colors in the future. The back, the top, and triggers, which have to be metallic or glossy for some reason. The D-pad color and style. You will get both if you get the accessory pack. Thumbstick tops and rings. Face button colors, which have a lot of options compared to the baseline Xbox controller. Menu and share buttons, which have even more options now. You can add text for $10, which feels like a necessity if you're gonna go this far into personalizing your controller. And then there's the accessories, which are also color customizable. Even the logo on the carrying case. A regular controller on the regular old design lab can be as little as $69.99 with no upgrades or anything. An elite controller can be as little as $149.99 which is still kind of a lot of money. If you want to save some more money and you still want an Elite controller, the core baseline option that you could just go to the store and buy is only $129.99. Still a little bit of money for a controller. So designing your own with color customizations will cost you an extra 20 bucks than just the baseline core model. Mine was all out, balls to the wall. So this one cost me $219.98. That is understandably a lot of money for a controller, especially a first party one. You have to really want one of these and want to use it a lot in order to get your money's worth out of something like that. But again, if you're going to spend a lot of money on an Elite controller, why not just personalize it? I do really love a lot of the little details in the Elite controller, what makes it more premium than a regular controller. The thumbstick ring makes for a nice smooth rotation. This is machined to be as smooth as possible. Other cheaper controllers might have a kink in the plastic. This brand new gully kit has a similar ring, but I could feel little kinks in it. I love having an actual D-pad, but I'm not gonna lie, that faceted D-pad is actually not so bad. The clickiness on here is incredible. I don't love where the D-pad is on an Xbox controller, but I'm not using this controller for its D-pad. I'm using it mostly for first-person shooters. One of my favorite features that is also stock on the core model is the adjustable trigger heights. And it's adjustable right on the controller itself. No need for additional software or settings like 8-Bit Do or PlayStation. And it actually changes the physical depth of the trigger, it's not just sensitivity, making it a true hair trigger, just like a Switch Pro controller. And if you wanna switch it back to full analog triggers for something like Forza, all you have to do is flip the switch. That's it, you're done. Although there is also a software if you want to adjust these settings even further, like thumbstick sensitivity or even trigger sensitivity, or even just remapping all of the buttons and setting profiles and stuff. There is also an option to change the color that the Xbox logo glows. That is awesome. You either need to use this software or the settings on an actual Xbox in order to assign the back paddles to a button, which is a little disappointing because other controllers that I have just have a button that will assign the back buttons for you. I love the idea of having back paddles. I just haven't trained my brain to start using them yet. Way back in the day on my Razer Anza, I used the back paddles for like melee attacks in Call of Duty. I'll just have to retrain my brain to do that again because pressing in the thumbsticks is just not how you do it. I'll probably only ever really need two though. Luckily, they're super easy to detach. And then you can also adjust the thumbstick tension. 
So instead of changing the sensitivity in game, you can adjust the physical resistance the stick gives you. Pair that with the longer sticks, and this can be super useful for precision aiming. All of that is what makes an Elite Controller an Elite Controller. The design lab just kind of takes it to the next level, in my opinion. If you're gonna be spending all of this money just to make some adjustments on your controller, why not just go all of the way with some personalizations? But I do wish there were a couple more personalizations you can do with this thing. For example, you can't change the color under the sticks, which you can do on an original controller. You can't change the color of the Xbox logo on the top or the printed stuff on the back and under the faceted D-pad. That stuff will always be black. The D-pad has less metallic options than the triggers for some reason. I also made a bit of a user error, I guess you can say. I didn't realize that you can choose the colors of the additional thumbsticks that you get in the accessories pack. It's hidden under the fold on the website, so all my additional thumbsticks are just black. The most glaring issue, which you probably noticed already, is the grips. The grips feel great, but they have to be black. Maybe something to do with the rubber they're using? I'm sure white or any other colors might get yellow or just gammy over time. But the grips take up such a large part of the controller, it makes it really easy to ruin a color scheme. I wouldn't even mind having the option to remove the rubberized grips altogether just to save the color scheme. So when you're designing your controller, you kind of have to design around the big black grips, which is a bit annoying. There's still time for them to add options to the design lab for the Elite controller. This is just kind of like the version one of their website. There's a lot more options now for the OG design lab controller than there was a year ago when I made the video. Now they have patterns for the body color, and you now have the option to add rubberized grips, which can only be black. So that answers our question from before. But there's still a few more color options here than there are for Elite controllers. For example, you can have a different color for bumpers and a different colors for triggers. Metallic colors are an option, not a requirement all around. But there's still less button options than there are on an Elite, which is a bit strange. Aside from the grips, I'm really happy with what I ended up with. Even designing around the grips, I ended up with something completely unique to me and something that fits my style while still retaining all of the characteristics of an Xbox controller. And nothing beats the premium feel and balls to the wall customization of an Elite controller. This is by far the most kitted out controller you can get from a first party and probably the highest quality and most premium you can get anywhere. Sony is coming out with their own take on an Elite controller for the PlayStation, I think sometime in January? And that thing clearly takes some inspiration from Xbox's Elite controller. And to be fair, it looks like it does solve a lot of the criticisms that I have with the baseline DualSense controller. But you can't get one personalized now, can you? Now, there's one thing that has potential to be better, but I'm not so sure I'm a little skeptical. I think like a year ago now, I ordered a scuff controller, which is essentially just an Xbox controller first party that they make modifications to and change around. But I suspect it's not gonna be much different than this and was way more expensive. I might be saving that comparison for another video. Also, I lied a little bit in the beginning of this video. I said I have never had an Elite controller before. A little untrue. I got the Halo one on some sale maybe about a year ago, but I never used it because it's so pretty. I just opened it, looked at it, and then left it on display because it's so nice to look at. This one I'm a lot more excited about and I will actually use, especially in like the next few weeks when Warzone 2 comes out. Unless I'm a mouse and keyboard guy now, I don't know, I'm a little bit rusty. I've been playing a lot more Valorant. So what do you guys think about the new Xbox Design Lab and these new cheaper Elite controllers that are still kind of very expensive? Will this solve any needs that you have or is this just something really cool and pretty that you want for yourself? 
leave in the comments below, at me on Twitter and any and all of this other social media garbage. I feel like I like this a lot, so it kind of reads like an ad, but it's not. This video is only sponsored by Audible. Don't forget to check them out at the link in the description. Thank you very much. I'd also encourage you to check out the website for the Design Lab, because even if you don't want one, it's still fun to play around and make your own controller design. Also, we got these shirts over on wolfdenapparel.com. Don't forget that, check that out. Of course, the most important thing that you can do to help support this channel is just subscribe right here so you know when new videos go out. You can turn on notifications if you wanna know when every single one goes out and share this video with a friend, a friend who maybe needs an upgrade on their Xbox or a PC controller. Thank you guys very much. Have yourself a very good week.